Unfortunately, there for Sox, a bit of a internet struggle there for a moment, but thankfully it didn't take too, too long. So we can continue this uh, show match here with DeSales and St. Clair College. Now, this part of Oasis in particular always interested me a little bit because you got the high ground on the point itself. Does that influence any sort of uh, hero picks or um, can you just run basically whatever you find meta at this point? Alrighty, so um, a lot of times with this high ground, you'll see teams run, well, what you saw spiked kind of briefly show off was like an Orisa or even an Orisa Rhine just to get like a really heavy presence on the point that um, isn't really like attackable because you know you either like go to the high ground and then you'll get pincered off by like a flank or you know people if there's a dive they'll dive up onto you um, and then if obviously having two shield tanks like that if you have one up on the high ground protecting your dps that can lay out damage across the point one can just easily drop down and either stay alive through the mass healing of either like an Ana or a Moira while um, gotcha. just contesting. Yeah, so back and forth so far. They're barely in the favor of Saints, I would say, making this double flank DPS kind of work for them. Kind of putting a threat onto Doompiss whenever he dives in to go point blank with some shotguns. But there's the Pulse Bomb available. Seymour does have his bomb if he wants to go for it. The Pulse Bomb goes and does hit Plain Bread. But he's going to get traded out as the coalescence comes out as well. Kind of short, taking down sock puppet. So there is one healer currently down. That orb is going to get so much value going through the pack. And it looks like the Sales University are going to be able to clean up this first team fight here on the second portion of Oasis. We do see ultimates coming online, mostly in favor of the Sales with their heavy tank ults, with the uh, grab and the shatter ready online for them while well, uh, Prince Wada and Seymour are straggling a little behind. I expect to see if they can get the Doomfist ult online quickly, probably what's called a space jam, where the, gra the grab is going to come out. Right, and right, right. Ult on top of it. Oh, here we go. There is the grab, and it's got a lot of the members of Saints in there. Crypt is going to get completely deleted by the charging spikes, and we do see Chinsanity spinning to win through the center, taking down Sock Puppet as well as Prince Wada and also demecking Seymour. Somehow in the background, they are able to flip this, I think that was Justin, who was able to actually claim the point, get a little bit of percent on for himself, and then it got flipped right back over to the sails. A meteor strike to just keep this fight going as Imp gets completely blown up alongside Crypt as well, and the sails with the sweep from there. Nicely done. Upcoming this fight, both tank ults for St. Clair are online now, so we could see a bomb shatter combo come out. We'll have to see if St. Clair finds and takes out plain bread so that way he doesn't have his beat online. It would do here the shatter, but I think that did go right into a shield, and Wada's gonna be able to answer pretty much immediately, but that was a nice beat to kind of negate some of the damage like yours. Thing we'd probably expect to see. Crypt is going to go down. Kinosher has just been on an absolute killing spree alongside Insanity. Once again, Saints are able to kind of backdoor this point, but it's going to get completely deleted as the sales come back and clean this up. And I wouldn't be surprised if they just left them alone. Okay, never mind. They just take Seymour out right away. And 20 to 79 at this point. Yeah, this is getting pretty dire for St. Clair. We are seeing the swap off the D.Va onto the Zarya, so we could see them attempt to try to build a quick grab. I don't know how well that's going to go for them, though, it being already at 90%. This is a good start, though, as we do see the Death Blossom coming out, but not really landing its mark so much, but they do get Chinsanity, and actually Sock Puppet's going to get the kill with the orb, and the rest of the members of the Sails are finally, slowly but surely getting taken down. Saints are going to be able to flip this, but if they lose one more team fight, it's pretty much over. That being said, now that point is in their favor, Seymour will have time to build up this grab, and the grab that Cure Frame is not even at yet, St. Clair already has their answer with their sound barrier. Yeah, at least they got that. However, Cure Frame should, in theory, be able to uh, 
get that pretty quickly. And we see Insanity just waiting to drop down, spin the win, perfect angle, right on top of everybody. He had the shields and he was safe and everything. Surprisingly, I think that was Imp's sound barrier, just like you said, kind of negated a ton of the damage. Graviton alongside the Coalescence. Seymour gonna get dropped, popped by Sino Shirt. And just the DPS and everybody from Sail is just doing so much damage. I think that's the fragile picks or something here from St. Clair is just not working out for them. It's going to probably be like 100 to 68. And the shatter just to basically be the exclamation point on that one. So game one, going over to the Sales University. I would say game two was a much more, or part two rather, was a much more well fought battle there for the Saints. However, the sales just looking fantastic in their damage department, in my opinion. I would definitely agree with that. I think that some of St. Clair's ults looked a little bit either too early or too late and a little uncoordinated, kind of. Like we saw some attempts at, we saw some attempts at what I believe was bomb shatter but the shatter was either a little too late or the bomb was thrown off too far to the side and the enemy team just was already out of the way of it. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, I'm not 100% sure where we're going to for game number two. I would imagine that at some point we'll see King's Row because it's not a Saints gaming match if it's not played on King's Row at least once. And I was trying to think if any sort of switch ups as we go into this or, or if they're going to hop into this game right away but how was your your first game of uh commentating overwatch here with me uh, i think this has been pretty cool you know i think i could already find some things i could probably work on but it's been fun hey this is uh, good Okay, so not quite sure. They might take five minutes here before we get started with game number two. So we're going to throw it to a very quick break, unless you have any final thoughts here for game number one. Uh, I think that just about does it. All right, so we'll probably be back within the next two to five minutes. Or maybe I'm a complete liar, as we're going to get right into game number two right now. It opted against the five-minute break, so we'll be hopping in very shortly, just trying to see which map it is that and it's going to be Hollywood. Okay, haven't seen this map in a good while. Initiating match. Interesting. So, I personally haven't seen Hollywood in, like I was saying, for a little while. Is there anything attack defense wise that like we should really know? Any standout picks for this map, or just uh, standard will do? Though I think standard is definitely on Hollywood. Always like. A good pick. I think there is ch a chance that we do see a little bit of bunker or double shield on the defense, as I've seen a couple teams try to run it. And it looks like it's just going to be standard. All right. <laughs> okay. Now, this is the first time we're seeing Justin on the Sombra compared to Tracer. Anything in particular for this, or do you think it's some sort of like hero counterplay? Anything I definitely think can? it's... I picked your I think it might be an attempt at shutting down uh, DeSales' Doomfist. Um, I think okay. he was definitely doing a lot of work in the last map, and Sombra being, well, Doomfist being very ability reliant, where without his abilities, he practically can't do anything. Where if Sombra gets a good hack onto him, he could turn the fight over really quick. Okay. Now, I would imagine that being very. Like, high risk, high reward, though, because it's not like she has a quick stun or something to stop the Duke Fist, right? So she could put herself in the line of fire by trying this. For sure. Sombra currently doesn't have a lot of utility in the game where most of the time she's used just for her ult. So using her just for her hack can be a little bit risky, but I guess if Saints feel like that's their go-to, then we'll see how well they play with it. Yeah, and they were able to break in. They are now on the point. Crypt's going to be the first casualty, though, of the team fight. Justin sneaking around, going to try and probably mess with this Diva who's hanging up the top. Nicely done. No more jets for you. You're going to get popped. And baby Diva time. And Imp's going to get taken down on the low ground. A lot of the St. Clair members are kind of stuck back at the arches. 
which is I feel like would be the rough spot to try and attack, the, like to kind of get stuck in. And sure enough, Chen's sanity is going completely insane with the bomb and just taking Crypt down right after that. Spiked on the board as well. And it just feels like it's they're having such a hard time trying to make use of like Sombra in this case. Yeah, I feel like the only real hack that, well, that I saw that she got was onto the D.Va, and right. that really only resulted in the D-Mech, but the D Doomfist and the Tracer were still able to flank around and, you know, do Tracer and Doomfist things, getting the picks in the back line, and that just sh shuts down your attack. Okay, slowly but surely making our way back. We do see the, sh the Shatter. It's going to go almost into the shield. The majority of it was blocked. One person did get caught up in that. Crypt is going to dive right into the back line. Does find Sinosure, or that was Yustin who actually found that one. Good job there, taking out the, one of the big DPS players on the side of the sails. Bit of a stun lock coming out here. Crypt's kind of stuck. That was a huge purple actually coming out from Plain Bread. We see the Shatter coming out from Wada as he's going down. The, the panic Shatter, it almost felt like. We got flanker duels, but in the meantime, everybody else has been dropping, and, and Crypt's been on basically a killing spree here, trying to finally get into this point. However, it does finally look like the sails is going to be able to turn this one back around. Although Saints do have some of their big heavies coming in here. We got Ryan leading the way. And three ultimates. We've got Diva Bomb coming out. Going to get blocked up. We have Spike switching over to the Winston. Try and get back here a little bit faster. And these purples from Plain Bread have actually been pretty sick. But still, unfortunately for them this time, they're not going to be able to capitalize. St. Clair is finally going to be able to capture this point. Looks like they're down to two ticks. And they're holding this pretty aggressively. They should have it. And sure enough, they're going to get point A. Now that cap was actually really good for St. Clair because they have a lot of ultimates still online. Whereas you look at the side of DeSales and they have like the Nano and the Doomfist ult where they could get something done with that. But with St. Clair's EMP, we could see an EMP grab yeah. or even just a hack onto the D.Va just in the gate. Like any chances of them stopping the grab from coming out. Slowing it down, taking their time here. Justin trying to find his spot. He does, of course, have that EMP. He's going to try and mess with the, the, uh, excuse me, the Ana. And Spike tried to charge him. Didn't quite work in that case. But they're about to bring this halfway. Sock Puppet going to be the first casualty and a huge bomb from Chin Sanity to take down two. And the rest of the Saints are going to fall here after pushing this maybe halfway down this first turn. All right, in this next fight, we'll probably Boulder. hopefully see St. Clair use some ults here as they have six online, or Imp coming up on his sound barrier. And the sale of the university ended up burning two. Just as I say that, there's there the goes. EMP shatter. Imp's gonna get one spiked out of the picture extremely quickly. Crypt's gonna find a kill on the uh, Insanity, who was doing absolute work in that last team fight. It's going to shut him down. Sino sure though, finds Sock Puppet pretty quickly before going down. So at least one of the support line of the Saints are down in this case. But Saints are going to be able to push forward. Aggressive spot. I think they don't have anybody on the cart as of the second, though. So they're going to be able to jump back, push this over. They're going to be very close to getting the second point. As the only people they have to really worry about is the, the flank from Chinsanity and the random diva up on the roof, which isn't necessarily too bad so far. However, uh, Sino sure. Just being an absolute nuisance here to the side of the Saints, taking down two, and it might force the retreat. As we see Sock Puppet running for her life, but unfortunately, Ana is so slow compared to the crazy mobility of Doomfist. Now, I really like the EMP Shatter from St. Clair because that means they get to hold on to their grab, and if they can get a hack onto mm -hmm. the D.Va, they can have a pretty much a free fight win with that Graviton Surge. Yeah, another free fight win could definitely result in this second checkpoint as we see two kills basically getting traded out off the start keyframe dropping the bomb however it was not going to be able to take anything we do see Sino sure once again alongside spiked just teaming up to slaughter pretty much the entire saint squad another solid hold here for the sales however i don't think any alts got blue there for saints so they still at least have some and yeah. yes it goes down last second that will be quite the stagger onto St. Clair, burning off more time. They're going to have to get probably, hopefully, the Sombra in behind a touch. Though DeSales did burn three ultimates in that last fight. 
Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll open up a window for St. Clair here. This could be a sick flank opportunity though. They spot the Anna. Might not even need the bomb to try and do it. It's gonna try and go without. The EMP is gonna hit, but that's another huge purple coming up from Plain Bread. Eventually, it shouldn't say gonna be going down. Justin finds him. And they find the EMP. No, they don't even necessarily need it. So you know, sure, it's gonna try and make something happen here in the back line, but everybody focuses in on him. Finally takes him down. The Saints finally pull a fight win right when they needed it. As the clock is going to wind down, they're probably going to be down to overtime here if Keyframe wants to try and interfere. However, getting messed with up top. And Yustin does have the MP still, so that shield could be gone at any point. We shall see. Amp manages to find Keyframe up on the roof, so nicely done there. And this is the skirmish. The EMP does go off. Sinosher, a sitting duck at that point, gonna go down. Crypt's gonna get the kill onto Plain Bread. And I think there's only just the Tracer left, and Sanity finally gets taken out. Saints are still in this 130 added to the clock as they get two points. Both teams burned almost all of their ults in that last fight there, so that could be big for DeSales being the only team left with the Shatter. They... All they would have to do is really get a big punch, or even now that they're running the Sombra, they could hack Prince Wada, and that's an oh. easy slam. Okay, so a few things. One, Crypt just got dropped before this fight even started. Two, what the heck is this Torbjorn from Yustin? Is this actually a thing, or is this a troll as we see the Shatter come out here from Spite? Oh, you look tired. Let's see, where the heck is that turret even? Just slowly but surely, I guess, tickling the rest of the, the sales crew down. But so far, it's actually looking like it's working here. It's not putting it on the card. He's just putting it off to the side. Just to have an additional line of fire, some additional pressure, actually. Interestingly used, as long as Saints stay on this card, they can definitely threaten this third point to get the full cap. Hollywood is notoriously difficult to try and get the th third cap for. Here comes the Graviton alongside... I think that was the... Do this. Never mind, that's... Yeah, Crypt did use his ulti, but does go down via a, a hack. And sure enough, Saints are going to be able to get themselves the three points. Full cap here on Hollywood. Wow. So I actually kind of like the Torb pick from Justin, as they pro mm -hmm. St. Clair probably knew that um, Spikes had his shatter, and that extra little bit of damage and pressure onto his shield probably forced him to like ult sooner than he wanted to so he put it right into prince water's shield and then st Clair could just easily finish him off while he's doing that animation that threw me off so much like i see the torb and it's like okay normally whenever i see a torb yarn that means that someone's overconfident but this was a back and forth match if anything it seems like a little bit harder for st Clair. so i was definitely questioning it initially however like you're saying like the pressure just seemed to help Saints in that case. They were able to break in, and they got the full cap. So there's a reason why I'm behind the commentary desk and not on the playing field, am I right? <laughs> now, this is a little wow. bit different coming out here for St. Clair. For the side of the sales, it looks pretty similar, just maybe spiked onto the Winston instead. But we see Seymour on a Sigma, Imp on Baptiste, Crypt on Bastion, for Swata bringing out the Arisa. So is this the bunker style that you're kind of talking about? This is this is the bunker style. This is the double shield. You know, you damage boost the Bastion. Any sort of dive attempt could be negated with Baptiste's um, immortality field. You have the extra turret to add an extra line of fire with the Torb, Bastion, and the turret just laying out damage. On top of that, Sigma just insane damage output, and his shield is can go in any angle. Oh, that's so bastion. annoying. <laughs> and just that little turret by itself giving almost 20% to Yustin before this team fight even begins. That's pretty sick. We'll have to see how the sales handle this. They are trying to go in quickly. However, they did not make it onto the high ground. It should mean that the Bastion gets to free fire onto everybody as long as they're not completely under him. Imp is going to be the first casualty, but Sock Puppet is right there for the res. Seymour going to take down a tank, but the Bastion is down. Crypt has dropped, and DeSales has gotten themselves one tick so far. Sinosher once again just being an absolute terror in the back line of the Saints. And this is going to be a very quick turn here for DeSales. That was so fast. That was really fast, and I think I could credit a lot of that to Plain Bread. 
he ended up going up behind and as Bastion went out of his sentry to try to get a better angle while they were all up against that wall, he booped every single member of St. Clair off of the high ground. Beautiful. Okay, so Seymour not wasting any time switching over to the D.Va. Of course, one of his uh, signature characters at this point as we do see him take down Jin Sanity, who's running the um, Sombra this time. Yes, and find himself a kill on the Sino Shur. So just Sino Shur being down, and at least in my opinion, I'd be so much more confident knowing that that Doomfist is off the playing field. Stuns the Capricius right before got the finishing blow onto Am. Nicely done. Wada gonna secure that one. Sino Shur back in the fray, just trying to mess with the back line with a bit of a flank. This cart is kind of stuck though. Nobody gonna try and move this thing. Of course, St. Clair is right there. And only the Molten Core available for the Saints, and we're about to see probably two or three here for the sale. Diving in and alongside the beat. So this is a very tanky to sale squad. Meteor Strike coming in. He's going to try and just pop the Ana. There it goes. And Spikes does find Crypt as well. So we're not going to be able to match Doomfist in this case. And Spikes continuing to just shred this... Uh, Sinclair team slowly but surely getting so much damage on everybody and that was a perfect fight there for the sales perfect fight indeed but maybe a little too costly as they did burn four ultimates that fight Sinclair coming up on almost all of their own we'll be able to see hopefully the molten core come out hey and burn through the tanks Oh, can't do that if you're EMP'd though, as Chinsanity gets a massive EMP. I think three, no, yeah, three of the members of Sinclair, including that Torbjorn. So the Molten Core is late in this fight, and the Diva Bomb from Seymour actually clutches two on both of the supports. So this is going to be a perfect fight here for Sinclair. That is exactly what they need to do get that support line out, and then this fight, slowly but surely, is might as well as good as done. Pop the mech, take down the Diva, and that is a sweep. Now, we did see him hiding uh, just before the EMP came out, and that actually saved a lot of St. Clair at the, just after that EMP came out. He was able to beat, keep everyone up, topped up, and both teams had a costly fight, so we see St. Clair on the ultimate advantage here. We'll be able to see, hopefully, Crypt go in the background and get a pick onto, like, the Ana, or not the Ana, the, either, maybe the Lucio or the Ash. <laughs> Now, Keyframe just got peppered as soon as he, they showed himself. So one of the big tanks d down here for DeSale stuck in Baby Diva form, which is just basically tickle damage at that point. And then Chin Sandy switching over to an Ash. I think this is the first time we've seen that, and it's starting off strong, taking down Yustin. You see Mirror Strike available for Crypt. It's the only one exception of the Primal Rage coming out here from the side of Spite. Uh, trading kills back and forth. Now there's another Meteor, or this is Crypt trying to make a play. Looks for the support, actually looks for the Ana, or not the Ana, the Ash rather. Wasn't able to get the shot that he had wanted, forced to retreat, was not gonna be able to get to that health pack in time. And slowly but surely, the sale is able to start pushing his card again. That being said, Prince Wada has his shatter online, and once that Winston bubbles down, he has free reign to shatter whoever and wherever he wants could be paired with a bomb if that's what they opt to do. Uh, Yustin switches over to the Hanzo and gets popped instantly. Now we're seeing basically all alts on deck. Everybody just basically alpha striking this point, if I sh should say so myself, to try and get on to the second checkpoint. You see Yustin trying to find his way back. However, he's going to be the only one left alongside Seymour, who's just getting booped around. He's trying to contest the best he can, but he's going to get popped, going to get taken out. And then Crypt's gonna try and get back, does get back. Okay, no, does get back in time. It is gonna get taken down as the sales manage to snag the second point. And they're still going. Chin Sandy starting things off strong. Prince Wada going down. Keyframe gonna be able to finish him off. They're pushing him right to the third point like it's nobody's business. Sock Puppet had nowhere to go. And now one person is all the way back to slowly but surely push this thing while everybody else from the sales is just being super aggressive. I feel like 
For this point, we're gonna see a Nano Doom come out to try to get an early pick, and if not, we're gonna see a Shatter come out from St. Clair. In response, though, DeSales doesn't really have a lot online. Oh. That Dynamite should have been able to do so much damage, however, Jinsanity did not find the shot. Bob is available. Jinsanity is basically untouched out here until Yustin tries to contest. However, that doesn't look like it went to Yustin's favor. Bob coming out to play as we see a nanode Wada running around swinging the hammer, doing as much damage as possible to the point-blank face of the Winston. We do see Dragon Strike as well coming out from Yustin. Was able to charge that thing relatively decently, and it's finally going to be Jinsanity going down. We're finally going to see St. Clair be able to hold after about a minute or two of extremely aggressive pushing here from the sales. We do see Prince Wado with that nano coming up on a really quick Earth Shatter. And once again, mm -hmm. you know, unless Spike holds his bubble, they're not going to have much of a response to that except for maybe the beat if the Lucio hides. Oh, Keyframe kind of put himself out of position. However, Sock Puppet got kind of smoked as well as Spike just dove onto her. And Spike with the double now taking out Seymour as well. We do hear the shatter coming out from Wada, but it was, it felt like a kind of a panic shatter once again. As he goes down, just kind of whips it out. A very emergency sound barrier coming out from Amp to try and keep this fight going. Allow for the rest of St. Clair to get onto point. This is very close to completing. We see Plain Bread with the, na or not the Nano, the, uh, Sound Barrier as well. Extremely tanky squad trying to push this thing to the final distance. Xenosure, of course, as always, being an absolute nuisance. Meteor Strike ready for anybody who wants to unfortunately peek out. And that's going to be two full captures here in this matchup. Score. Three to three. Switching sides. And then both of them were below one minute. So I think we're just going to reset at one minute each and have a bit of a shootout almost. Okay, you no, know, Saints go to one minute and the sales one minute, eight seconds. So pretty much the exact same thing. Extremely close game here today. Holy smokes. Yeah, this has been very close from both sides. I feel like we're probably not going to see the bunker come out as it seems like DeSales does prefer the dive on attack. So I'm going to see the Reaper. Yep, there's the Reaper from Yustin to try to prevent that Winston and the rest of the dive from coming out um, from DeSales. So, however, it looks like they're not going to be attempting that again. They're going to go back to the Ash, pocketed by a Mercy, so probably trying to look for those just one taps to the head to open up this point. Oh, yeah, that hurt. And then, yeah, so... Like you're saying, Yustin probably expecting the Winston. However, Spike's not going to give it to him. He's going to go back to Ryan. And then we've seen Plain Bread constantly switching between whether it be Lucio or Ana. Beats have been on point. The, uh, the Purples, the, the Biotic Nades have been on point as well. Cutting off healing or just shielding his team. It's been on fire so far today, as we see. Oh, that was a body shot and it would hurt a ton. Crypt instantly getting tapped. There's that one tap that you were looking for, and that's not how you want to start things off if you're St. Clair. Itch and Sandy's going to find a huge pick, though, as Sock Puppet goes down. The Mercy getting dropped. Surprisingly, Yustin not trying to finish that off. Oh, it was because of the Slip Doomfist. Okay, that's actually pretty clutch then. But a lot of kills going over in the favor of the sales at this very moment. Killing the Ceno sure is clutch, yes, but now Yustin's kind of in a rough spot. We're gonna try and Wraith walk his way out of there. Thankfully for him, he's not gonna get pinched out. He's gonna be able to regroup. But DeSales also gets the chance to regroup. And it's now or never. And there's another purple right onto both of the tanks. So unfortunate as we see the rest of the Saints squad getting pretty much evaporated. Yustin's going to find two, but it's basically him versus the world. And Crypt is going to try and get himself back on here just to contest, but it is to no avail. A very strong hold for the Sales University. Score. Three to three. I'm Switching curious sides. to see now is what St. Clair is going to do on their defense. I feel like they're probably, or, or I'd like to see them come out with something different, something that they haven't played yet, something that isn't going to mirror what DeSales is doing. Because it seems like whenever they try to play 
uh, the same game, the same comp against the sales, it kind of just falls apart for them. Mm -hmm. And then we saw the bunker attempts get completely washed in their very first hold on here. So we'll see if they try it again or try something different. And it doesn't look like it's going to be bunker this time by possibly something similar ish to what the sales were just doing. You're and you're just saying whenever St. Clair tries the mirror, what the sales have been doing, it still seems to be the sales on top. For sure. Some interesting picks coming out from DeSales running, opting to go BAP Moira. Very interesting. Or maybe the BAP to try to prevent the one punches from Doomfist, but it seems like he's going to swap back to Lucio. Yeah, they switched it up as this team, I think it's safe to call it a dive. Because <laughs> sure. all these these characters are going in for the most part, with maybe Moira like kind of in the midway point. And it's a very scary composition, especially if you are Sox or Imp in this situation. Like, even Crypt is kind of vulnerable if he's in, they're all not positioned properly. It's good purple actually coming out from Imp to start things off. However, Yustin's going to be the one maybe overextending his attack a little bit and getting popped before he could really do anything. Did get a lot of damage onto some of the members of the sales. However, Plainbred and Caprisius is doing a fantastic job of keeping everybody up. Plainbred even doing his part and taking care of the support line. As we see spiked, of course, like Mercy's worst nightmare. Is diving on top, and this should, in theory, be the first tick, which is all that the sales need. Wada gonna try his best to keep this in as he tries to shatter them out, but that is it. The sales going to take game number two. He has a two very hard, intense matches there for St. Clair, but unfortunately just weren't able in both matches, to be honest, or in two or both those rounds on Hollywood in regards to defense. They looked like they just got completely shut out. Their defense, their positions just got completely wrecked, and like somebody got picked, supports get picked out afterwards, and it was just all downhill from there. And then a nice adjustment from the sales to pretty much shut down the entirety of the Saints attack. Is there anything additional you want to add in regards to that Hollywood match? Um, I'm, I'm not really too sure about the Hollywood match. I'm just thinking about looking forward to maybe see St. Clair play a little more comfort picks rather than trying to play what is the presumed meta or whatever, uh, trying to mirror uh, what DeSales is doing. Because it seems like whenever they try the meta or whatever uh, DeSales is trying to do, they just get shut down. But like when we saw they pulled out the Torbjorn, like that's when like things started to work well for them. Yeah, it was very unusual. And then looking at some of the stuff that they have been picking out, like say for Sox, for example, um, I would say that Mercy is a comfort pick for her specifically. And then... Yeah, something like the Torb, it was effective during the one, but it was not effective during the defense uh, during that first attempt. So it's like, it's a little rough. The sales definitely given St. Clair a run for the money. And then I'm not sure if we're doing best of five or if we're doing five games total, regardless of score. I'm sure I'll be, get updated. It is just going to be best of five. So it's uh, now or never for St. Clair. So we're about to go to game number three very shortly, I'm sure. I would not be surprised to see king's row unless they're trying to do a different map type i'm sure we'll see once the game starts getting up and i'm happy to see everybody in the chat um either excited about the tour pick or giving some hype towards st Clair. we see you guys thank you so much for the support and let's try to think is there any final thoughts in regards to oh, i already asked about final thoughts to hollywood yeah. but unless there's <laughs> anything else that came to your mind uh, not really too much besides that. I just want to see them try something different. And a good thing that where we had said uh, we're not going to go into a break, and this is not exactly the map that I was expecting. We're going to Dorado for game number three. So, of course, a full, like, push-the-cart map. I'm sure you know the actual proper name title for this one. Escort? Is yep. that it? It's a full escort. escort. The name. There's no... Uh, no capture points, just push the dang thing, and you will find victory. 
I'm just see momentarily who's attacking, who's defending. Because I feel like the high ground here of Dorado kind of lends itself if you wanted to try a bunker composition. Which, if we take a look, it looks like the sails might be attempting something like that. We do see Spite on the Orisa and Plain Bread on the, the Baptiste. Is there anything else that we should know about uh, Dorado specifically? Um, specifically looking at Yustin's tracer pick, going back to what they tried on um, Oasis on their first map, Dorado first point is very good for tracer with, especially if they're going to be running bunker on that high ground. Um, Yustin has a lot of different places he can try to flank around and go to, whether it be underneath and go behind up the stairs, or go around the, the right side to try to go above, and it looks like he is opting to go below. All right, one thing also that's kind of interesting is that this is the first time I'm seeing Capricius on Zenyatta compared to one of the other standard healers. Looking to maybe get some frags for himself, but we see this is the problem. Oh my goodness, he just sniped him out. Nice shot, Capricius. Always good to see the, the heroes that are supposed to be counters not countering, especially a Zen popping off, embracing a Jonak, if you will. Yeah, absolutely beautiful shot there from Capricius. But meanwhile, St. Clair are able to push it under the arches, which tend to be one of the more stubborn portions of this map to try and get through. With an aggressive position, Seymour gonna take down Capricius, so some support is gone for the time being. They're gonna be able to bring this pretty much to the first point, uncontested. This is probably the best attack we've seen from him all day. Yeah, probably. And best attack for sure, where we see DeSales not really getting a lot done, especially in regards with their ultimates. Like, their Capricius is like coming close to his uh, transcendence, and they have the. Nope, now they don't have the Baptiste Matrix. But on the side of St. Clair, we have Prince Wada with his Shatter, Crypto has his Bob, Soft Up coming up on Coalescence, as well as Yistin with the Pulse Bomb. We could be seeing. That was. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, you can go. Oh, I was just going to say, like, that was absolutely disgusting what we had saw earlier. Basically, it was uh, Wada and Yustin. Basically, the two of them versus the world, pushing sails so far back that even trying to contest the second point is going to be difficult as they're kind of stuck in the garage doors. And there we see the, the Bob coming out from Crypto actually making... Both of DeSales' shields, both the Orisa and Sigma, burn their shields on the Bob, so they're not going to have those shields up for this next fight. Okay, Transcendence is popped as such a soft pop it fires off the Coalescence, but of all things to blow Transcendence on, I feel like that probably wasn't one of the ults you want to really trade for it. So unfortunately for Capricius, he's going to go down. Yes, I'm going to find that. Coalescence is available for Brady. Bra he's going to fire it off. Kamehameha through everybody, right through the shields, does not care. It's actually willing down the Saints players so much, and one more orb is going to really threaten them. That was a ton of damage real quick coming out here from the sails. Now the sails is probably going to try to get an early EMP off here, so I hope Imp is going to be hiding to try to get his beat off to try to counter that. And then Seymour... Uh, with his grab, with the sails burning their trans last fight, that's they have no defensive ult to stop any damage coming into that. Uh oh. Oh, I thought he was gonna go for it. Oh, now or never. Yeah, there we go. Huge EMP. Yustin's the only one who didn't get tagged. And of all people, I guess Tracer wants her mobility for sure. But so having the beat drop would have been absolutely huge in that case. It's constantly trading back and forth. Wada going to find the first kill. They're going to trade the tanks out. Spikes going down. However, Sinosher taking down Crips Ash. So, some good sniping presence taken down. Sinosher is on an absolute tear. Takes down Sock Puppet as well. Going to try and annoy Wada. However, Wada just got to smack him with a hammer and call it a day. Shatter is available. And Bob as well as Coalescence. But Wada is going to go down before Shatter does come out. Uh, Sock Puppet's not quite even in the fight here at the moment, so this is slowly but surely going to get cleaned up here for the sales, and they'll be able to recruit. And huge for the sales part, now that St. Clair had to, was forced to burn their beat in the last fight, this Sigma ult is going to absolutely tear through St. Clair. 
presuming he doesn't get burned out early in the fight. Well, as we do a train transcendence also available we see Transanity making the switch over to soldier as well although capricius gets taken down before transcendence can even become a thing here comes the sigma ult's gonna get a few of them alongside the ult from flame bread and of course those orbs doing a ton of damage but if they're doing damage they're not doing healing and that is gonna be four going down for the sails and they're gonna be able to get the second point and how much extra distance can they get here as justin looks to see if he can pick off any other stragglers crypt's trying to find himself a sniping position and another switch for Trins uh, for uh, Trinsanity. Having a hard time deciding which character to play, it looks like. Oh. With the Pulse Bomb. That fight, last last fight, was huge for St. Clair, as DeSales now only has their Transcendence. They could try to bait it with the Shatter and then have an easy grab in the next fight. We'll see what they do about that. Especially since Shatter is a hard to get off with his double shield. Two shields in the way. Yeah, the longer this fight goes here, the less and less I see St. Clair pulling ahead in this one. Because you know sure getting himself a triple at least. Just wearing him down slowly but surely and taking him out. But there's still two minutes and 20 seconds on the clock. Guess I'm going to try and get cute, but it's kind of a ballsy move here. Waiting for Wada. And then Crypt gets taken down before his team fight even begins. So we have a bit of a stagger. Huge shot for True Sanity. And this one's going to be another reset here for St. Clair. Now we do see a lot of ultimates coming online for both sides. Particularly Grab and Pulse Bomb are online for St. Clair. It would be interesting to see them use the Grab Pulse Bomb. Because that Pulse Bomb, even with the trance, you will see people die in that ult. Oh, huge shatter stops playing bread, and that's going to be the charge right onto him. Wada taking down that one. Will we see the Big Bang, or are they even going to need it? It doesn't even look like they're going to have to. Wada's ult was going to be enough here. Seymour's going to fire off the grab anyway, and that should do the trick. Bob coming out, I believe that is from Chinsanity, but that's not going to be enough. Sino's going to at least take out Wada, but that should still be enough time for them to bring him back. One minute still, this is going to be a good flux coming out here from Keyframe. Slamming him down, but there's going to be the beat drop. And now here's Bob on the side of St. Clair. Right in like basically every firing lane. Doing so much extra damage and putting on so much extra pressure. It's going to be Spikes trying to contest this thing. Flamebred trying to keep him up, but nobody is going to be there in time. They're all kind of trickling. Three points for St. Clair. Score. Three, switching sides. Initiate and forgive me if you hear my cat singing the song of her people in the background. She's just as hyped as we are for this game. Shoutouts to Nascat. All right, let's let's see what these teams are going to roll out with on the their offense and defenses. I wouldn't be surprised to see St. Clair try a bunker of their own. However, it does seem like the the comp they were running last time was working well for them, and that's what they're going to come out with. Except I mean, if they back on the Ana. I'm just trying to see here on the side of the sail. So we see Plain Bread with the the Mercy instead of the Moira. However, it's going to be Creasius who's going to take Moira instead. So no more Zenyatta, no more aggressive but fragile support mine. However, looking at this, that's a lot of uh, squishy targets if I were Saints. If I were Crypt and I see this composition, I might not be too uh, too concerned if I can pick, get one or two good headshots in that turns a fight. For sure. It is interesting to see the... Moira Mercy come out as I'm wondering who the Mercy is going to be clinging to throughout this which it looks like it's just going to be the tanks for now though That's there isn't a cool. defensive ult that they'll have for anything like a bomb or a pulse bomb okay, so first casualty is going to be spiked getting caught out by the dynamite damage and there we go sock puppet was in perfect position to keep everybody topped off alongside AoE healing from him 
and it's gonna send the sails back to the drawing board, at least for the time being, as that dynamite damage from Crypt just continues to find its marks. Imp also built his beat really quickly, I think in like 40 seconds. It's an impressive time. Yeah. He'll be able to have that for just about anything he wants here. You know, he could probably burn that and then be, have another one up for by the time Chinsanity has his EMP up. Yeah, now we're starting to fire off some ultimates. We see Coalescence going through a ton of the members of St. Clair. Bob coming out right before Crypt died, so at least there's some sort of pressure coming out. Valkyrie also going in there. We got Battle Mercy coming out. Let's go, Flame Bread. As the Shatter comes up from Prince Wada, which may have been the overextension that uh, St. Clair was looking for. And the Shatter does catch quite a few. They're going to keep him stuck here in this archway at least a little bit. But slowly but surely, they're just kind of trading blows at this point. And this cart's going to move ever so slightly as we wait for the cavalry to arrive. Spike's not wasting any time, just finds Imp out of nowhere, picks him off. Primal Rage is popped at this point. So he has a ton of extra health, and he's going to try and challenge Crypt. And Crypt is going to go down, force up against the wall. Nothing can do there. Socks, nowhere you can go with a, a diving monkey at you. It's going to be the Diva Bomb coming out from Seymour, but he's going to get pops before he even gets the chance to remech. The orb from Plainbread taking care of that one. And it's just, it may be a little bit slower than what we've seen the Saints do, but the Sales University are going to be able to take this first point. Now this next fight, we could see an EMP bomb combo come out. As with that EMP going off, all of the mobility that St. Clair has to avoid it will be gone, as well as the shield from Prince Wada to block the bomb. Absolutely, it could be a huge thing. However, another thing that's kind of huge is the Mercy going down before the team fight even starts. Yes, and finding the kill there, and the main tank of Spikes going down, Wada trading him out. And Seymour taking down the Divas mech, so there's no bomb opportunity. And this one's falling apart here for the sales. So the Let's decide for one long. second, and that was an absolutely devastating one. Always. For sure. We do see a lot of ultimates online, though, for both sides. Uh, Keyframe holding on to the bomb as they only needed the coalescence to burn through everyone after that EMP. We do see Prince Wada, Crypto, Sock Puppet, Justin, and Imp having their ults for the next fight. Well, they might not get another fight before they cap this next point as Spike is just tearing up people with his Primal Rage. Yeah, that's absolutely brutal between the Rage and then just the, it feels like the tickle damage coming out here from uh, the Tesla or whatever you want to call his uh, his weapon. It was doing a ton of damage, however, finally going to be taken down as we see Wada cleaning that up. A two to three with still four minutes left on the clock. There is a lot of time here for the sales to put them together. A lot of time for them indeed, but not a lot of ultimates to do it currently. St. Clair, if they use their ultimates efficiently, could stagger this and snowball through at least a couple minutes. Yeah, for sure. We saw Seymour getting aggressive, making sure they chase them all the way back to spawn. And then Crypt and Gustin look to get some pot shots here. And basically bait the Winston into jumping in as the rest of the team was just basically right around the corner. Alright, they're all trying to like, go through one little door. This is going to be a little bit messy, especially if we see a Coalescence come out. We see the Shatter come out. Does it find its mark? I think it got at least a couple. However, the flankers on the side of the sails are going to be able to get two kills. With Wada and Imp both falling down. We do see Playing Bird getting onto the kill feed once again. And slowly but surely, Saints are starting to fall. As we slowly but surely also just drown this corner. That can be so difficult to try and push through. They're going all the way, actually. Holy smokes. Basically right into the spawn room. Spikes finally overextending. And with that last fight, we see Imp burn his sound barrier, which could have been crucial trying to counter Chinsanity's EMP this next fight. 
as well as Spike's Primal Rage. He's showing off that he could use that pretty much like a Genji Blade. This is match so far. Absolutely. Now we do see the EMP attempt coming out. It is going to get three. So it gets on to Soft, Yustin, and Crypt, and Yustin and Crypt get dropped very quickly. The DPS line of St. Clair is shattered, but they do have to worry about this Diva Bomb, which does manage to take out Insanity. But she already did the MP. The job's already done. It's up to everybody else now to take the reins and do something. We see them slowly but surely get to this final checkpoint to see if we can get ourselves a three on three overtime rounds. Still a minute 40 on the clock. Lots of time here. St. Clair coming out once again. Imp switches over to Zenyatta. That was short lived. It's taken down very quickly. It is just Prince Water who's going to get dropped. And this should be. Um, the point captured here for the sales momentarily. Even though Seymour's doing a decent job of stalling, and it's just going to be trickling from here on out. Yasin's going to try and switch over to Reaper, but it's going to be no avail. As they're going to clean this up. Wada being extremely stubborn, actually, getting that Primal Rage, but even through Primal Rage, just gets dropped so quickly. And there we go. 3v3, we've got overtime. A very close round so far. Just like on uh, Hollywood on the last map, only about a 10 second difference between the two teams' times. And of course, this being a best of five match, it's basically now or never for St. Clair to get themselves on the board. DeSales have been putting a fantastic wall up, basically, for them in the past two maps. This one looking the closest. Because Hollywood... It looked like both teams on defense kind of struggled at first, but then the sales were able to adjust. Game one looked like it barely was even, like it wasn't even close. The sales just smoked us on Oasis, to be completely frank. But this one's looking much better. We do see similar comps coming out both sides. However, spiked on the Reinhardt this time around rather than his Winston. And Prince Wada opting to go onto the Winston for their attack this time around. It does seem like St. Clair is going to attempt to dive. Not sure how effective it would be, their dive target. Probably going to be the Mercy, however, with... The team playing so spread on DeSales' side, she will just be able to fly around, get wherever she wants to, and avoid the dive completely. We'll see how it goes. Fight's just about to start. And at the air, we do see <laughs> Parisius with the Mercy basically just camping the or pocketing the, D the Diva for the time being. And then Plainbread finds two extremely quickly. That's a huge pick for. A support line, which you don't usually expect to show up too much on the kill feed. A flame bread has definitely been pulling his weight and more here on this DeSales squad. And Precious is going to bring Xeno Sure, another DPS member who's been doing an absolute crazy job. And this one looks like it's going to get shut down pretty quickly as we see more members of the Saints dropping. Crypt down, Wada down. Seymour does have the bomb if he's able to possibly pull it off, but it would be a bit of a, a last ditch effort as we need somebody on that card at all times. I think he got demeked as well and did not get the chance to pop the bomb off because he was hacked. And that is going to be a brutal way to go out here. Doompist is going to be able to take that. That is Crypt trying his best. He is going to be able to find Keyframe, but it's up to Sock Puppet and Yustin. And I don't think either of those have the tank to really hold themselves there. And we're going to get stuck right under the arches. A minute 10 to make it pass there, or a minute 10 for St. Clair to hold to bring us to a game number four. Three to three. Switching Definitely a very, very difficult hold for St. Clair here as it got stopped just before they went into the arch. So not even being able to have that choke available to them on their defense. They're going to have to try something here to pressure out hopefully the tanks maybe of uh, DeSales as they're just making so much room for both uh, Sinosure and Chinassi to pop off. Ready for battle. I'll show them. Justin opting to go mm. with the Reaper to try to counter out the Winston that they're probably suspecting at this point. 
Well, last time he made that call, he wasn't quite right. Spikes did switch over to a Reinhardt. However, if it stays as is, he might have made the right read. This is true. The Reaper pick is definitely a niche-ish pick now that he's been nerfed a little bit. So up against a Reinhardt comp, as long as he's got healers, he's going to be generally fine. We see oh, Sank there this? looking to, for a spawn camp. I mean, you don't have much room to to work with. Those archers aren't very far away. It's like one team fight's worth of distance. And it looks like actually everybody from DeSales went out the far side anyway. So other than plain bread, everybody else was able to see it coming. Nobody got jumped on. And this is extremely messy. They're not exactly in the positions that they want to be. Spike switch over to a Roadhog. However, going to be going down pretty quickly. And Justin still alone in the front lines, forced a Wraith walk back. But one bad fight here from St. Clair could be the end of this matchup. Or they could somehow hold it right here and bring us to a game four. Keyframe on the point, however, he's going to be demex momentarily, I believe. Spike slowly but surely trying to contest this point, but of course he doesn't really have a shield. He's just face tanking for the most part. We see the Farah coming out actually from Sino. Gonna just kind of do so much extra AOE damage here in this uh, in this room. Does have Capricius right there as well. That is going to hurt right around the side. No shields to protect them. Right through the coalescence as well. Plain bread, trying to see what they can do. Takes down Seymour. So you know, sure finding a kill onto Imp and Spiked also finding Prince Wada. This one is probably the, the fight that St. Clair were definitely not looking to see as it's pretty much a wipe here for DeSales. And will they be able to make it back in time before they reach the point? We're gonna do with the spawn camping strategy there. The idea behind it is you're supposed to be able to get back to the choke, but if the sailors can manage to stop them, which Prince Wada does make it back. Just in time, however, basically, it was him pretty early. Like you're saying, Shatter is definitely available. We do see the barrage from behind. Crypt's gonna shut that down, though. Don't need to be a hit scan to stop that thing. And he's gonna be able to do so. Two going down right now for DeSales. It's overtime. If St. Clair do manage to win this fight, they are gonna be able to bring this to a game number four. And it looks like with Killframe being the final one available, St. Clair are gonna take Dorado. I really like the aggressiveness from St. Clair there as spawn camping that door when you have so little t like space to work with. If you just sit on the high ground and let them push almost all the way up to where they need to be, one lost fight and it's over. But with them pushing and holding at the door, they had a time to get back and have one second fight. And that managed to be what ended up calling it because they had what their ults online. Calling it. They had the beat to give everyone the extra health. They had the beat to give everyone the extra health they needed to survive that Roadhog with the extra damage. And Wada landed a fat shatter that managed to slam almost everyone onto sails down. That had to be so nervous. However, Saints playing it properly, so they're going to be able to keep this this battle going. Game number four just about to be underway. And as to what type of map is it that we're going to be getting, I'm just trying to remember the order. So we saw Hollywood for game number two, Dorado for three, and then always says it's going to be Horizon. So another map that I haven't really seen in a long time. And this one, yeah, this one's a 2CP if I recall correctly, right? Yeah, that's correct. So if we had all those other matches, or like game two and three go to overtime, the likelihood of this one going to overtime is probably pretty likely too, because from what I understand, 2CP is just so easy to go back and forth on. For sure. 2CP is a very, either it's either really prolonged or it's really short, where you could see a team full hold or it's just round after round after round, both teams capping both points due to the nature of especially Horizon Lunar Colony. Um, and I suspect we might see some dive as... Horizon Lunar Colony being a very good map for dive and already seeing it come out from DeSales. It probably is probable. And is that because like most teams decide to like hold that high ground area, like where the stairs are, or like alongside the the perch, I guess if you want to call that for point one? What yeah. else about Horizon makes things in like a little different compared to other places? Um, the thing with Horizon is first point is very difficult to crack, especially when you're like 
uh, running like a standard Reinhardt Lucio comp, pretty much the only option you get is to go up that right stairwell, which if you're running like a Junkrat or a Farah or something that can spam that staircase, it's very difficult to go through. Um, another option is the teleporter, which also can get spammed out if it's, you know, the team sees it coming. Um, but dive on the other hand is very effective because it gives you so many more opportunities to go where you want, where like, if you want to go on the right side of the high ground or the left side of the high ground, like you see someone out in the open on one side or the other, you know, you have that option to go there instead of just funneling into the same place again and again and again. Interesting. All right. Now, personally, how much do you actually like Horizon? I despise Horizon. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I expect. Uh, <laughs> um, with first point being, especially since it's like the opposite of the other two CP maps, uh, first defense or first point being very heavily in favor of defense, and second point being in favor of the attack, just because of how open second point is. Um, it's it just prolongs two CP even longer on that map than it is on other maps. Nice. So somebody had to reboot their computer, so we're just taking a quick moment before we hop into the next one. Not sure if they have made a bet. Everyone sounds like they're just about ready to go, so it won't be too much longer before we get into game number four. I'm thankful to see the adjustments that St. Clair have been making. And Dorado, barely, very close, but barely going into their favor. We have to get another game underway. And it sounds like we're going in. Here we are. So here's that first point that you were talking about, the high ground with the stairs that most, most teams, I assume, would at least try to tackle a couple times. And this little section right here looks like Winston's playground is basically the first point. So nothing oh, sure. really happens right here. This is like a little transition point, right? It's usually this little area right here, this bay. Point number two, this is where the, the end of the line fights usually tend to come down to. Yeah, and we do see St. Clair rocking the double shield, so they are going to bunker. Bunker on offense. Attack. Interesting. Very interesting to see the double shield come in on defense, or on attack. I mean, it's, I'm so, so used to from last season seeing Orisa, Sigma, it's still like processing my brain that this is actually different. This isn't standard. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, we have Yustin on the Hanzo Crypt on a Symmetra. Never mind, it's going to be the switch over for Yustin. Reaper is going to be the play. So they're looking for some sort of teleport shenanigans here, it looks like. Yeah. I'm swapping over to the Rhine's area. I keep forgetting to not make predictions. For... <laughs> um, I presume they're either going to teleport to mid or to the right underneath. And it seems like they're going Are they going to right point. to point? Holy smokes. Just blitzes right through everything. They're going to be able to get one one tag more than likely before they even contest. They do get one piece of it. Spiked is so far getting the worst of this alongside Imp and Crypt. And Crypt is going to be the first casualty alongside Sinosure. So two ZPS players down. These corridors are pretty much exactly where you want to be if you're a Reinhardt. You're, your hammer's smoking everybody. Spiked getting a double on the support line of St. Clair. And this push is probably going to get shut down at one tick. It's just a matter of dealing with Seymour. And he finally goes down. And Yustin goes down as well. So the hold eventually comes out. However, at least St. Clair do get the first, the first third of this cap. Oh, you see the teleport to the high ground. I'm going to try to probably drop onto the point after finding a pick. But that first tick is insanely important on Horizon Lunar Colony because it could be the difference maker between either f trying to force a draw or you the game being winnable when it comes to your defense due to the nature of first point being so defense heavy. On oh, Yes, and once again, just being so sneaky. We've seen this from him constantly here today with all of his flankers that if he's not contested, he'll just go for the points and he almost gets himself an additional tick. If the rest of St. Clair are able to follow up before it expires, that's going to be huge. And they're going to be able to secure a second one. It's just a matter of getting this last one, they, then they can move on. 
And I don't think there's anybody from sales really able to come here and see always do CC. You know, sure that it was just him. Everybody else gets purple, but is able to keep moving here. As we see Ana eventually, a little bit of an Ana battle. As we see Sakpa been taking down Creasius. Now it's all the way on to point B. And we have four alts on deck for St. Clair. Probably a fifth by the time we get there. And then probably three or four here for the sails. This is going to be a bloodbath. We hear the shatter, and here comes the Graviton. The beat's going to stop it a little bit, but we do have Death Blossom on top of that, and that is a lot of low health bars on the side of the sails. This is looking fantastic so far for St. Clair. Four minutes and 20 seconds, and they've already gotten one tick, and they're probably going to get themselves another unless the response can come out quickly. They do finally make it, and that's a solid purple alongside the Graviton, so that was actually a brutal combo coming out from the side of the sails. However, that's two ticks on point B. That's huge. For sure. We also saw Crips, um, massive shield when he threw it out on the point, essentially turning their comp into it like a pseudo double shield with the Rhine shield and the Sim shield blocking that Earth Shatter that came out, shutting down the sailors' uh, defense almost entirely, as that's one of the only ults they had online at the time. Oh, wait for it. We see Insanity up top diving in. He's going to pop it. Spins a win. But surprisingly, not as much damage going down as you would expect. Shatter coming out. That's Wada's as he's barely hanging on for dear life. And that's a capture. That's a two points captured here for St. Clair. Didn't see who got it. It's probably going to be Justin because that's what he's been doing lately. Oh, wow. They managed to backdoor that kind of. That was a that was a big C9. I think DeSales was too focused on uh, backing up their Reaper during the Death Blossom with St. Clair having an impressive uh, defense against it. They were just too focused on the fight that was happening off the point that they missed out on the capture progress that was going in for St. Clair. Yeah, fantastic job there for St. Clair. That was easily the best attack we've seen them do however can they counter with a strong hold now because like you're saying and we were talking about earlier two cps are extremely uh, difficult to try and deal with Attackers one sure we see the sales um showing off the sim almost like they might try to do the sim strat against saint Clair, but I figured they might be ready for it just because of the fact that they already tried it. And with the double shield comp, it'll be a lot easier for them to uh, defend against that massive damaging Sim Beam. Attackers incoming. Defend objective A. So up on the high ground, standard position so far for St. Clair. We do see Teleporter coming out. They're going to try and mimic the exact same thing, but they just eat a massive dynamite to do a ton of AoE damage here on the side of the sails. So we do see Chinsanity, the first to go down. Spiked is probably going to be short to follow, but another good dynamite on Plane Brid and Keyframe. This is going to clean things up nice and quick. Solid hold so far for St. Clair. see Justin make the swap off the Reaper to the Doomfist, which is actually really good against the Sim strat here. Because if they try to teleport straight to point, if Justin's ready for it, he can punch someone off and then it's, it becomes a 5v6 situation really quickly. Yep, step back up, same area. Do we see a similar play? So, you know, sure, of course, does have 50% on that shield, so a little bit to go still. Purple on top of the dynamite going to do big damage. And Plain Bread's probably going to be next to go. No support here for the side of the Sailies. And Crypt with the finishing blows to just add even more damage. See if you can pick off this uh, this Ryan Hard. Looks like he's going to hide behind the wall. Never mind. Yeah, you don't have any time to breathe here versus St. Clair on Horizon. Yeah, I'm not really sure what DeSales' plan was on their attack, they're teleporting straight into St. Clair where the double shield in the way with the ash on the opposite high ground, they just got damaged from all angles. Hey, they're so stuck in there. Part of me just wants to see Bob go in there and have fun, but however, I know that'd probably be a bad idea. I like the dynamite idea better that Crypt is doing here. 
And never mind, he's actually gonna do it. So Bob is gonna just go in. He's probably gonna get blitzed out. So um, the rest of St. Clair are not gonna follow up on it, which would have been a huge overextension. So I definitely don't blame them for doing so, or for not doing so rather. Dynamite right on the plane bread. That's going to hurt. You see a sleep onto keyframe. We have the B coming out, but it's not going to be able to save Spike. Big tank line going down. Do see the, the bongo going down here from St. Clair as well. So much extra damage. It's going to force them off. And they're going to walk back right into Crypt, who's flanking with that dynamite. Absolute brutal hold here. And he gets another one. Clean as a whistle so far for St. Clair. And now with Desailies having to burn that Lucio beat, just going up the stairs, Seymour with his Gravitic Flux now has a free opportunity to get a massive ult, dealing so much damage on top of if they have a Dynamite and then a Doomfist going in, it could be easy cleanup for their DPS. Oh, and this is gonna catch so many members. Huge Flux coming out. Seymour gonna try and do a little bit himself. We do see the Nano boosted Doomfist here for Justin. He's gonna try and follow up as well. The healing has been pretty decent so far here on the side of the sails. And St. Clair are actually getting extremely aggressive here to the point where they have to probably fall back. Otherwise, they might accidentally throw their position away. And thankfully, they are going to do so, retreat, and get back to their position. But yeah, that push has got shut down completely. Just about 30 seconds left on the clock. With that being said, we don't have... The sails doesn't have a lot of ults online now to try to get this last defense, with St. Clair having a lot of theirs up. Crypto, though being a little too greedy with his positioning. Yeah, you can tell he was trying to wait. However, he did get spotted pretty quickly. So, unfortunately, the surprise factor was kind of gone. We see Yustin up in the sky. Look at the meter strike. He's not going to find a kill. There's going to be the, gra the Graviton coming up for the side of the sails. However, that didn't really hit the mark, I don't think. Nobody really got scooped up in that. Overtime is now here. It's either now or never for the sails, or we are going to game number five. That's a nano boosted Reaper going point blank with the Doomfist. Enough defense to do so. However, he just eats a boulder for the sake of it. Bob coming out. This is on the side of St. Clair. Going to help hold this point. Spin to win for Sino sure, and it's probably going to be the difference maker to them getting this first point or not. And sure enough, they're going to be able to secure this. Saints are going to wait for point B. Very good stall there for the sales while they were trying to recuperate after St. Clair having the advantage initially. But on this defense now, we see St. Clair with ults online and the sales not going to be able to match their time bank. So St. Clair is going to have the advantage whether they cap or not. Yeah, Bongo on the top. However, that is a huge purple coming out here from the sales. We do see the flux coming out from Seymour as well gonna slam them down however this point was not held anywhere near to the same effectiveness as point one was and they should be able to flip this with a quick team kill they're gonna have a little bit less time to work with however they could have themselves a tie game yeah two minutes to 316 score two to two Initiating match. So my first point for St. Clair was extremely well held. Second one didn't quite go to plan. It seems like some of the, the alts, some of the shields just weren't where they needed to be. They had tried to get something started with the bongo, and then I felt like the flux was either Ready. like he got it as, or he used it as soon as he got it, or it was late. And it didn't quite halt the the push as much as we would have hoped for at, for St. Clair. But we're going to see the sales back on attack. Two minutes left. In theory, this should be full holdable if St. Clair are able to put on the performance they did during the first round. But we'll have to see. And we do see the same comps coming out for both sides. Which, I mean, if it's ain't broke, don't fix it for St. Clair, but... The sales trying the same thing they did minus the sim. It's kind of like questioning what they're gonna do. Maybe they try to back cap a little bit with Tracer, get that one tick while the fight's going on. 
Well, I would hope that St. Clair, if anything, would know to watch out for uh, the backdoor attempts, considering Justin just seems to be an absolute madman at doing so. And yeah, they're in the exact same positions as last time, and it is going to be a pain. They're going to try and take it along the left-hand side. However, that leaves them open to the fire from those at the right. However, that is not the DPS, so at least the damage they're taking is not the highest in terms of DPS. Justin going to find Shinsanity. Actually, see more of the accretion snipe taking down Tracer. Good shot there. All the Saints are on the point, so no backdoor attempts here. Trading blow. Sino going down, but taking Crypt with them. But now that it's basically close quarters distance, if anything, the defense, the, uh, the DPS you want to take down is Justin here with this point blank Doomfist, and he finds the Ana. This Ana's life is probably going to be short-lived unless the Sleep Dart comes out. But that'd have to be one hell of a shot. 60 seconds. One minute left. This is looking so far so good for St. Clair. Good indeed. And St. Clair, though, coming up on top on that fight, doesn't have many ults coming online, except for maybe Seymour's Graphitic Flux. By both support ults online for DeSales now. However, that was a big stagger pick now that DeSales doesn't have any healing to go with them. That was so weird. Caprisius was with the group, and I'm not sure how the heck they got picked off. But they're going to try and take this through the outside in the low gravity area. We see Plain Bread with the alt available. Spike gets snoozed temporarily. Now we're going to see the Coalescence come out. The Plain Bread gets sniped out instantly. That alt basically did nothing. Bob is going to come out to assist with the defense here onto this point which could be absolutely huge. Justin has a ton of room to work with, and Seymour got a ton of them in that flux. We might be going to a game five here if Saints can get at least one tick in the overtime rounds. So this is no longer losable for St. Clair. It's either win or draw now, and with the way they panned out on their attack, it's looking very possible if they try that TP strat again, if DeSales is not ready for it the second round, then it could be just an easy, quick win for St. Clair on this map. Yeah, because when St. Clair attacked this one earlier, it was not, like, extremely competitive. They basically teleported right onto the thing and were able to get two ticks basically by itself. But because of the overtime nature, you just need the one tick. So, like, it's going to be difficult here for the sales. We see some different picks coming out as of right now. As we see uh, Spike on the Arisa. We see Creasius picking up a Mercy as of this moment. And Sandy thinking about some sort of uh, Symmetra stuff. And this is the first time we're seeing Junkrat even hovered right now for the sales on defense. In these close quarters areas, I can definitely understand why Junkrat bombs, traps, and um, the grenades would be so devastating here. And keyframe with Five, the four, Sigma four, sure. clean bread on Ana. Especially with St. Clair going to be rolling out with the TP strat again, Junkrat is an insanely good pick against it, where the second you know where they're going, Junkrat can just lay down fire and get either a couple picks or bring it, almost everyone on the team down low. There's a teleport right back in the position. They do blow up Crypt right away for it. So Cedosher's Junkrat is going to be putting some effectiveness in. However, Yustin's going to be able to shut that down. So no more grenades, no more huge zoning shots here on the side of the sails. However, Caprisius is going to bring him back into the fight. So a big res to try and keep this one going. And the sails should be able to take this first one as we just see Seymour gets smoked by a boulder. And this is going to be a wipe here for Sinclair. With St. Clair's TP, we saw Plain Bread was ready with the anti bot nade, and the second they teleported through, they anti'd. Had, no one was able to get heals, everyone was half health, and then Junkrat laid into the damage, and they instantly found a pick on the uh, Crypto. Oh, and with the Junkrat, here comes the Fara. Yustin taken to the skies to try and deal with this Junkrat. And the rockets, although a little bit less AoE compared to grenades and bombs, still extremely effective. And if you have nobody who can snipe you out of the sky on the other team, except maybe an Ana, the Ana has other things to do. It doesn't want to have to worry about the Farah. It doesn't have to. However, so far so good right now for the sales as three people going down. Seymour's going to trade out Insanity, but Freezius is going to be right there to res. 
And this one is going to get taken down as well. That's two pushes, is two wipes. So far, so good for the sales. Hello there. And we see the swap off of the Reaper onto the Genji from Justin. Looking like St. Clair is going to try to get a quick Nano Blade to get an easy fight win with that. As nothing can stop those Genji slashes from dealing its damage. For sure, and I just realized too, if, if Sino sure has been just getting pocketed by his mercy this entire time, that is absolutely brutal. All alts available for the sales. Breaking this is going to be brutal. Okay, Sino you know, gets taken aback by the maid, and actually, with it only being a minute away, this is almost now or never time here for St. Clair. The bomb is going to find Imp, so it's a pretty good pick. Crypt's gonna shut down Sino finally. However, a bit back and forth, but it's looking like another one for sales. They're gonna commit the Graviton here. That might have been a bit of an overextension. I know you don't have much time, but I feel like you should have saved that for the last fight. For sure, and they also committed the Nano into that fight, so even if Justin does build up this blade, he only really has maybe a Reinhardt Earth Shatter to try to help him out when it comes to finding those picks, but yeah. other than that, he's not going to have an easy time with this blade when he gets it now. And of course, uh, Genji doesn't necessarily care about um, like the character standing still. He just wants to do maximum damage as possible. He's got the mobility to make it work. And a huge nano boost actually saves the Sigma. That was a big play on the side of the sails. And this one could be going to a draw as it's only up to Yustin who pulls out the blade just in time to die. And this is going to be inconclusive. We're gonna go to game number five. However, the best that St. Clair could do in this situation is tie the game. Play of the game. Oh, catching my breath here for a second. Very crazy game. It was good to see DeSeo switch it up a bit and with a different defensive strategy, able to hold off for about two minutes and 30 seconds or whatever the time was, able to hold off the attack of St. Clair and we're going to get to see another one. Oh. For sure. I definitely, the counterplay from DeSales after seeing the Sim just annihilate them on the first attack from St. Clair on their second run, they were ready with the Sigma shots, the Junkrat bombs, and the anti nade just to plow into wherever they teleported and popped up at. So St. Clair definitely struggled on their first couple attacks when they tried that. Yeah, I'm thankful that the sales didn't fall for it twice. Like, they let it happen, but they didn't let them get it for free. So, nice quick adjustment there. I think we'll be getting into game five pretty quickly. I haven't heard anything in regards to people uh, disconnecting or have to reboot the computer, so it shouldn't take too, too long. Where do we go for game number five? I would be very surprised if it's not anything to do with King's Row. Because normally that's almost, without question, played in a Saints matchup, unless it was banned if that's a, a process they had gone through. Now, I'm and... not sure of the map order, but if it's going by the way the Overwatch League does it as well, like how they follow their bands, I'd presume it's going to be a control map. It's usually okay. the... It's Busan. All right, it is control. Okay. okay. I think yeah, I wasn't quite 100% sure on the the order in regards to which map types were played. I knew there was an order, I just couldn't remember what the order exactly was. Yeah, Busan, this is a map that we haven't really, at least personally, I haven't gotten really to see too, too much. I just know there's the one area with the, the gazebo, one area that has the ice up and down. And I think this is the gazebo one that I was talking about, if I'm not mistaken. No, the drum. That's what I was mistaken with. The big drum in the middle. Yeah, so... We see a lot of sniper play here, at least from my experience. Is there anything additional to know about Busan of your knowledge? Um, with the current, um, like, kind of like meadow going on, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some Hanzo and Ash due to like the map being definitely really good for snipers. I don't think we'll see Widow just because Tracer is a heavy counter for her right now. Hmm. I would imagine trying to snipe a tracer would be extremely difficult. That's why I was so surprised earlier when we had seen 
uh, see more clobber a uh, tracer with an accretion that I popped off a little bit because it's like, holy smokes, that's that's kind of hard to do with a instant shot, let alone a boulder that's traveling a while. Oh yeah, for sure. Five. And it does look like we're seeing two very different, different comps. What? We're seeing a pharmacy come out Capture from DeSales and kind of a similar thing coming out from St. Clair that we've been seeing from them. So and this is the first time that I've not seen spiked main tank. Plainbred took the reins and said, let me lead the charge, guys. I got this. Spike switching over to the Soldier 76, first time we're seeing this. And then, like you are saying, the Pharmacy, I think this is the first time we've seen the sales try to attempt this combination. And right now, I mean, Crypt is there for the answer, but it's still a hard shot to hit with a, a, far, a far that's just kind of floating, bobbing, and weaving around all of these objective points, all these buildings. Imp is going to get the first kill. However, I think Xenosher is going to be right there to try and trade. However, three going down on the side of the sales. I don't think even with the amount of pressure that Xenosher is putting on, that it's going to be enough unless some overextensions are made. And they're going to be forced to retreat this time by. For sure. With this, uh, the comps that the two are running, this Justin on the Tracer is just able to flank into the back line and take away so much attention from DeSales tanks and DPS due to the Ana and Reinhardt just being easy uh, ult charge for this Tracer. And Tracer finding spikes right away. And Burton Swada finding two more with this, the flame strike and the charge. Everybody else is free pickings here for Crypt. And just continues to put the pressure on them. One more headshot, but he, of course, is pocketed by the Mercy. I like the idea that Crypt is doing there, that maybe get the dynamite involved, try and get them both flying around. But another retreat forced here for the sales. We do see a lot of ults coming online for both teams now as we could see a Shatter Barrage uh, with the be brutal. massive healing and damage boost coming from uh, Cap Caparicious here. Yeah, Valkyrie pops very early into this fight. Gonna try and sneak a res, but Sinclair's gonna turn around. I think he still did pull it off. Plainbred in the middle of everybody, but he's a sitting duck. Gonna fall down. Prince Wada on an absolute slaying spree right now. That hammer is finding everybody's head, apparently. And it's another retreat as we hit the 84% mark. Now or never here for the sales. Now that barrage shatter combo still online, so they're gonna have to try to pull it off quickly. And they're going at it 5v6. Spike's already down. The nano comes out as well. And they are gonna find Imp at least. And they are going to find enough kills after the barrage. Sinusher stays alive. Plain Bread goes on a tear. It's just a matter of dealing with Seymour, and they're going to slowly but surely take care of that. Seymour delays as long as possible, but finally the sales is going to be able to flip this point. With that said, though, the sales not having a lot online now, aside from their tank ults. St. Clair having both their tank ults and the sound barrier online to answer to Keyframe's grab. So setup is there. Yustin's pretty shortly away from a pulse bomb, so you could see Big Bang go off at some point. See if Seymour looks to take a shot, although they take down Plain Bread before they even really get started. So having that huge tank line down is going to make Crip's life so much easier. We see the Shatter coming out. Spiked is down. Xenosure is down. The Saints are going to get grabbed, but it's basically just delaying the inevitable. Imp firing off the sound barrier just because. Probably didn't necessarily need it. However, this is going to be the flip, and they should be able to hang on to this. The Shatter coming out from Plain Bread, not going to hit its mark. He's trapped there, and that is going to be the first part of Busan going over to St. Clair College. Yeah, I definitely think DeSales could have reacted a little better to what St. Clair was running. As the thing with control and playing a pharmacy is that's two of your characters like taking up the, that resource, right? So... If you don't have control of the point, St. Clair can just kind of sit back and avoid the fire rockets and clean up the 6v4 and then just deal with the pharmacy afterwards. So DeSales looking like they're going to try it again on this point, which this point is arguably better for a pharmacy. Four, or not. Three, or going to the Doomfist now. Okay. Round 
Now we're going to switch this up a little bit. Spikes making the switch was over to Hanzo for a second, but now he's looking at a Genji. So Nanoblade combo is something we can definitely look forward to. We see Seymour actually on the Roadhog. It's the first time I've seen it from him specifically. Looking at just Snag Winston out of the air. And Crips attempt at a Widowmaker gets shut down instantly by the sales and specifically Flamebread finishing that one off. However, this uh, this Roadhog landing hooks can really put a dent into some of these meaty targets of the sales or even taking down, of course, the squishies if he does manage to find one. Dancing around shield to try and do his best. Yasin getting one, however, Imp and Sock Puppet going down from the side. Of Sinclair, we do see Yasin picking up another. That's Spikes who's off the point. We already have a Primal Rage here for Plane Bread. He's trying to get everybody off the point, but it's looking like there's some capture points currently going on for St. Clair, almost capturing it, but it's just a tank battle. Plain Bread going to win it. Imp's coming in for the reinforcements, and he's going to be able to capture it alongside Crypt. So a very drawn-out fight, but still going in the way of St. Clair in the end. We do see the Reinhardt swap now from Plain Bread, and I agree with that due to the fact that with Crips making the quick swap over to the Reaper to just get back and absolutely destroy the dive comp, especially with Winston, he's not able to deal with those shotguns very easily. Absolutely, and Spiked is also not going to be able to deal with shotguns very well from Reaper if he's stuck point blank with them. It's going to force him away. There's going to be the Meteor Strike looking for Sock Puppet, going to find the mark. Flame bread going down, however. Support for tank traded out. This is going to be Yustin's turn to take to the skies. And now, Insanity on the Ana going to be going down. The Dragon Blade didn't necessarily find too much utility. Just takes down Imp. So I guess it's something. Yustin's going to get bombed out, though. But a nice hook there from Seymour going to take out the Mercy. Sock Puppet trying her damn to try and keep the members of St. Clair alive as we're passing the 55% mark. Still contested. Crypt hanging on and taking down Plane Bread. Plane Bread switches over to the Winston and just eight shotguns, exactly like you were saying. And then there goes Sino Shirt. A very drawn out fight once again. And St. Clair is looking fantastic so far here. Hey. Looking at some of these ultimates, it's going to be a problem here for the sales. We do see the Nano Boost available. But you don't have a Winston or a Dragon Blade or anything coming up at least anytime soon. I mean, Dragon Blade may be around a corner, but is it in time? Not if you get booped off by him. That's a huge play alongside the Death Blossom from Crypt. This is going to wipe things up, and this should be a very fast 2 0 here for St. Clair. If we do a decider match, we're going to it. For well, sure. I. I... I'm a little con or surprised to see DeSales not adapting like we've seen them adapt in the previous maps where on um, like Hollywood specifically, like whenever St. Clair tried something that worked, it seemed like DeSales was able to make the right swaps and just counter it on the second go around. And also on Horizon, we saw that our defense was a lot better the second time around against the teleport. Whereas we see here, Whereas we see here, they just weren't able to make the correct swaps in the right time. And then when something didn't work, they ended actually ended up going back to it at the end there, going back to the Winston off the Reinhardt. That match just gave me like so many question marks in my head. Because one, Plain Bread has been doing fantastic on support this entire day. Why was he switched to tank? We had one of the attackers on the side of the sales also went from DPSing to support as well. Why did this happen? Of course, this is still technically, it's a show match, but it is still a scrim at the end of the day. So if you want to try something different, you could. However, you can tell that like the sales were just not surviving, which was huge in portion to the support play of Plain Bread. And the, everybody was out of their, their norm, out of their comfort. We had mentioned comfort pit picks earlier, but what about your comfort role? It felt like they were definitely out of that going into Busan. And I'm just getting the confirmation as to whether we're playing a sixth map just to have in a tie. And sure enough, we are going to be getting a sixth map. And where the heck is, where the heck are we now? 
So we are on Lijiang Garden. So we're on another okay. control map here. Um, definitely look to see some Fara. Definitely going to see Lucio no matter what. Like obviously this looks we've seen like a lot but on this map for sure. Oh yeah. Um, could also see a lot of probably some more Reaper as once this point is capped at this very close quarters, and we see the pharmacy coming out from both sides. And surprisingly, no Lucio as of this moment, but things can still be swapped up within the next 20 seconds. And yeah, Wada on a Winston, which doesn't happen too common. Yeah, that's for sure. I think Prince Wada is going to try to build a quick primal rage just to try to win out. Uh, they got to win the first fight and then have an easy win with the second fight with primal, but that could burn them afterwards if they're not able to make the swap fast enough. Fair enough. Surprisingly, no Lucio, even still. Here, so the, the boop potential only be done by the, the Farah, and sure enough, Sino sure is going to find Amp right away. Taking him off the top. We do see Insanity doing some decent damage as well. Yasu going to try and fight it right back. However, this first fight is looking in the favor of the sales. It's just a matter of trying to deal with Yustin and Sock Puppet, trying to deal with the Pharmacy combo. Crypt getting back into the fight, seeing what he can do. However, he is going to get bombed down and taken down by Keyframe. Xeno sure has got them right where they want. So if he could find one more strong boop, that would be absolutely huge. We see the... We see Yustin going down, and sure enough, the sales is going to take this first cap. So we do see Prince Wada swap over to the mirror with the Reinhardt. Doesn't surprise me as without the Rhine, it's going to be very difficult to shut down that Pharah. Um, not too many ults coming online for St. Clair, but the Nano is coming up for Plain Bread. We could see a Nano Barrage or even a Nano Shatter. Both would be devastating, and there's a lot of damage coming through this little corridor. Definitely looking hard to get through. However, the Reinhardt is extremely low, spiked, nearly getting dropped. However, Caricius right there with the save. Plain bread as well. However, a huge shatter coming up from Spiked. He's going to be able to turn this fight around. Nano Ryan versus Nano Ryan. And basically been a trade so far. Three down on each side. We see Bob making an appearance. This is on the side of the sales. However, it is going to be flipped over in St. Clair's favor. Just a matter of dealing with this Farah. And it's been extremely difficult for St. Clair to try and do it. We see Yustin with the barrage if necessary. Just trying to juke around. Actually wins that duel. Nicely done from Yustin, but can he stay alive? He's not going to be able to. Does get rocketed out by Sino Shirt. Does have the barrage available, but do you want to do it in front of a D.Va? I really don't think so. Going to give it a shot anyway. Takes down Sock Puppet, so worth. Yustin going to answer back with two before going down, though. Absolute crazy. Back and forth fight here in this capture point. Saint still ticking with points as of this moment. Prince Wada nearly going down, but I don't think there's anybody nearby in regards to healing. Imp finally making it available and is going to get the kill onto Sinosure because of the Biotic Nade, probably just trying to heal the Reinhardt. It took um, took Sinosure down as well. Crazy fight. Yeah, and you saw like a brief glimpse there of why Farah can be so hard to attack with once the point has gone in your enemy's way. Because the Reinhardt's massive meaty shield and the insanely long defense matrix can just negate all of your damage and just completely ignore you. Oh! Seymour <laughs> taking that fight down before it even got started. We see the meteor strike just to put the icing on the cake, so to speak. Bye-bye, Mercy. Huge win here for St. Clair. We do see a barrage online, though, for Krenosher. That could be integral to them flipping this point. And with St. Clair being kind of grouped up, this is looking sort of juicy. However, I assume they want something different, or you just straight up blitz the support players, and that's exactly what Sino sure does. Super effective, taking down all of the healing from St. Clair. Is going to eventually get taken out, though. Yasin and Crypt trying their best to turn this around, even without any sort of healing. Plain bread going down. There's just mercy on point as of this moment. And we're at 99. Overtime is ticking. Spikes trying his best to get back there. He could have a shatter momentarily. Gets killed right before he can use it. And Barrage is available. 
going to shut down that doorway, and that is going to be St. Clair taking the first portion of Lijong Tower. Zero to one. It's going to be interesting to see what these two teams pull out this time around as there is potential for an, a sim TP strat if they want to get to point quickly. However, it doesn't look like currently they're going to be trying that. Yeah, so a little bit more um, close quarters action. This control point is basically a gigantic square. And along the outside, of course, there is no walls. You can get booped off. You can get uh, either hit by like a fire concussion or we do see the Lu Lucio coming into play here for St. Clair. Could come into effect. It does seem like St. Clair is opting to go for a more close quartered brawly comp with the Reaper and Doom being able to shred down tanks in their way or both being able to flank around and pick off a squishy healer if they so desire. And clutch timing coming out there from Prince Wada, saving Sock Puppet's life. That would have been a huge portion of their healing gone. So of course, Lucio has AoE healing, but it's not exactly the fastest of healing. You cannot burst heal without your ultimate. However, Sinosure making sure takes her down this time by securing her first. However, Crypt on a tear and a huge shatter coming out from Prince Wada. This is going to shut this push down dead. We do actually see a random barrage coming out, but there's really no super, like extreme support. They do take down Seymour. They do take down Crypt. It is still somewhat close. However, Justin is just going to run amok. It's just a matter of dealing with this Tracer and Sock Puppet actually finding the shot to take care of that one. And now Ryan is kind of in a bad spot. Spiked is basically alone with maybe a long range to Moira Orb to try and keep himself alive. Gets killed before the Shatter even takes effect. Absolutely brutal stuff coming out here. DeSales is struggling. St. Clair almost in position to essentially reverse, reverse sweep. Is it a sweep if there's actually a tie in the middle? Probably not, but still from going from 2-0, or from 0-2 to possibly winning this thing, they're in a fantastic position. For sure, the reverse sweep definitely possible for St. Clair, and now with the ultimate advantage due to D-Sales burning a lot of their ultimates for what seemed like no reason at the end of the fight there. Spikes got destroyed before this fight even started. This is brutal. The res does come out, but now they lose Reaper. They have not been able to get themselves a solid 6v6 fight in a good little while. Justin's going to spin to win here, but it's going to get blocked out. Decent damage all around. He's going to be able to clean up with the rest of the St. Clair squad. 90% left. Can they get back to the point? Battle Mercy isn't going to be able to do anything. They're getting aggressive on this hold. Graviton right in the spawn almost. Who's going to be able to make it? Barely, barely missing. Huge... Huge play for St. Clair. Was enough of a stall to get the job done. The Reaper was not able to touch the point in time. Reverse sweep complete. And There's that bomb. big shatter bomb combo. Yeah, that was beautiful. Yeah, those diva bombs are usually yeah. those diva bombs are usually pretty predictable. But I suppose if you're knocked over via a shatter, there's nothing you can really do about it now, can ya? So Saint Clair showing their wits, going hard mode basically with uh, going down 0-2 in this matchup tonight. However, bring it back to a 3-2 victory, and that was an exciting one. How about that for uh, for a matchup for your your first time? Uh, commentating here with us at Saints Gaming. Uh, it was definitely an exciting one. You know, going the distance all the way to a game five is always, you know, a good way to start having a lot of content to go on. A lot of these maps you can kind of like go through, see a bunch of different comps come out and be able to give out my, uh, my input on the different strategies that they decided to play. That uh, was absolutely fantastic. I hope you enjoyed it because it's definitely something i'll gladly have you back for in the near future if more scrim matches do end up happening now as as for the match itself is there any 
final thoughts in regards to this match in particular, or are we pretty much good to go? Um, not too much to go, or not much I could really say. Like, I know um, St. Clair definitely did a really good job pulling it back after going down 2-0. It can be very tilting, especially with no, like, real prolonged breaks in between. Um, and seeing the sales, they kind of had a bit of a decline throughout the matches. Like, you saw how like strong they were on the first map, and they were very adaptive on the first, on the second and third maps. But on the fourth map, they tried some weird things where they were switching up the roles their players were playing. And then on the fifth map, it just seemed like they were burning ults for just the sake of using them. I agree completely. Definitely, some of it did seem very out of place, but. For us, for, for tonight anyway, that is the end of our coverage here for the Overwatch scrim. Big thank you to everybody who tuned in. I also want to give, of course, another thank you to Bailable for coming here for the first time on commentary. Fantastic job, dude. I definitely hope you come out once again. Thank I you. Then, I'll definitely think about it. Awesome. I want to give uh, Nick, give Yeti, our observer for today, did a fantastic job of gearing us the coverage of the action and all the the scenic views in between rounds. Thank you so much, Yeti. And also big thank you to Ryan Baker for doing his damnedest and doing all the research in terms of figuring out how to maximize this uh, remote casting quality as we continue to try and figure out how to, how to do the broadcast without use of the nest. But without that, I think that's all for tonight. So thank yous again. We shall see you, I believe, tomorrow for Bird's Eye View. We're going to have a, a late episode at 3 o'clock. And I do think we have CR6 on Friday as well. We'll see you next time.